and we are live. Welcome everyone um, to our second CTF live stream session for the Cloud Native Security Con North America 2021. Um, we're, we hope you're enjoying the CTF challenges so far. Um, this is our second session and last session for today. And we also have uh, another set of great speakers for you. Uh, so let me introduce you first, my uh, fabulous co-host, Ashish. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. See already people are coming online as well. Uh, so there's someone first, Ibrahim, and good notches. I think if I pronounce it correctly, welcome, welcome. Looking forward to hosting this with you, Magnum. And uh, nice. looking forward to another awesome uh, CTF. Nice, that's awesome. Do you want to introduce our guests for today? Sure. Uh, who do we start with first? Uh, I, I think uh, once we come by one by one, are we going to bring them one by one? I think we're going to one by bring sure. them one by one. Let's do that. Oh, oh, have... all of, oh, <laughs> oh, hey, hey, how's it going, Louis? Uh, yes, welcome going to great. The show. Uh, welcome to the Capture the Flag. How's it going? Um, tired, but it's good tired. <laughs> it's, it's been a long day, and um, lots of people are capturing flags now, and it seems like everyone's having a fun time. They better be having a fun time. Please say you're having a fun time. But yeah, no, yeah, incidentally. Really the crowd definitely seems to feel like, so for folks who are commenting, they're definitely feeling it's like, yes, it's awesome, nice. And uh, so for people who are watching this, please give some cheers for Louis, because it's like, what, 11 p.m. at your time? Yeah, yeah, but we're just getting started. But it isn't just me. So I'm taking the role of Taskmaster and Goose today, but there's some other uh, people there. So again, shout out to Michael, shout out to Steve. Um, you're going to see someone else who is on there as well. So yeah, but you know, it's awesome. And it's lovely just to be part of it again. So thanks no, for well, Welcome, welcome. Uh, I was going to say, uh, do you want to introduce a bit about, tell, tell everyone about a bit of yourself, Louise? Yes, this is um, still Louise. <laughs> yeah, no, this is still me. Um, if you want to know more about me, you can look at the last stream. Um, my favorite color is blue. Um, I, I think that's pretty much it for now. But it's, um, I think it's a lot more interesting people who are coming up our way next. So I'll, 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 I'll pass the floor to them. Awesome. OK. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we have an idea. Oh, Nikki, welcome. Hello, Nikki. Welcome to the hey. show. How's everyone doing? Good, good. Good, good to see you. And uh, as well. I think the way we're running this is we're telling our favorite color as for what Louis did and a, 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 bit, a bit about yourself. Favorite color? I don't know. I guess I would say it's blue. It's a lot of blue. So. Oh, well, yeah. okay. So I'm going to add another layer after this now. So you I can't use the same wonder... color again. <laughs> right. I always wonder what you get out of this question. Though. All right. Uh, here's another one. I like the color white, which I know is not a color, but it's just a really great thing yep yep it is definitely a great thing as well. it looks really nice in summer as well on people just for people who may be interested in fashion but uh yeah. welcome nikki and well uh if you can tell us a bit about yourself as well that'll be awesome yeah so i am the host of the oas devslop show and i think i've met a lot of you via that um weekly live stream um in my day job i work you know in the security space like everyone else here so uh yeah that's me. How did you get involved in cloud native security out of curiosity? Well, you know, maybe about three years ago, somebody was like, oh, we're going to build this whole new productionized Kubernetes app, Kubernetes based situation with like dozens of apps on it. What do you think about security? What do we need to do? And I was like, huh. So that led <laughs> me down this journey of learning Kubernetes and getting involved more in the cloud native computing foundation. So out of necessity. So thank thankfully, everyone <laughs> was here to help. Oh, so it wasn't really by choice, but by necessity. Like, oh, I guess I have to make friends with Luis and Magno as well now. So, cause... yeah, could somebody help me secure my Kubernetes clusters? Uh, anyone ever done yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, 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 uh, I'm so glad to have you here, Nikki. But uh, I'm yeah. looking forward to having hanging out with you as well, along with other guests who are coming in as well. Let's bring the next person in. Hey, Jaffe! It's like you're not you're not surprised you're not surprised to the cloud security I'm oh, sorry cloud native security community, but do you want to still take a moment to introduce yourself to people who may not know you, who may be in the live audience and maybe in person and saying hello to you there as well? Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm Duffy Cooley. I'm the field CTO at Isovalent. I'm also a member of a, a somewhat notorious crew called Sig Punk, 
and we've done a number of talks to try and get security sort of more in the, for, the, the front light of things and, and get people more engaged and make people feel welcome into that space. Um, what, <clears throat> um, I will definitely echo exactly what uh, Nikki said. I think that I, I think his, his take is a perfect one. You know, like I think I think of my job as actually helping kind of develop that community spirit, make sure everybody feels welcome, make sure everybody feels like they can ask any question anytime and that you can actually get help doing pretty much anything you want to do here in this space. And so I, lo I love that you said, you know, I, I reached out and I had help immediately. That's great. Yeah, yeah it's great. My, yeah. My favorite and, uh, color lately are, are all six of these colors. You know, I've been, I've been doing oh. really few <laughs> well, well, yeah. As so a, pick, pick your thing. favorite. Is that, is that what we're going I, with? Awesome. I think I'll I'm go okay. with three. So we've got a few fans in the live chat as well for you, Duffy. Someone just saying, hey, Duffy, over there as well. For, for folks who are watching this live, feel free to drop in your favorite color as well. Consider you love to hear what other people have their favorite color. If it's a, it's a, there's a few honks coming as well for you, man. Uh, all right, we'll move to the next guest as well. <laughs> hey, Jim, welcome, man. Welcome to the show. Hey, everyone. Nice to be here. Oh, welcome. Uh, so the way we're doing this is very short intro. How do you got involved in Cloud Native and the favorite color? So yeah, quick intro, um, I'm co-founder at Nirmata and we are the folks behind Kiverno, which is a admission controller and policy engine in the Kubernetes space. Um, my background is more, you know, software development on the operations and management side. And of course, you know, as we, the more software that gets developed on Kubernetes, one of the challenges we're trying to solve is how do we, you know, um, make security a bit easier and automate as much as possible. Um, so that's sort of my foray into the security space. In terms of favorite color, any of the solids, right? Depending on, uh, I guess, time of day or day of the week. Um, but yeah, mostly like the blues and uh, other, other, you know, solid shades. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm just realizing blue has a very popular, uh, for popular color today. I wonder yeah. whoever is listening in, if they have blue as well as their favorite color. So feel free to drop that in, people. Uh, we have another guest as well, I believe. Thanks for that, Jim. Hey, Andy, how's it going? Another, well, are you are you at 11 p.m. time as well, or are you actually no, at home? I have uh, inveigled my way into the United States of America. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you Very sound happy. like Welcome. you're not a smuggling your way into uh, US there. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but as you may have heard, uh, the way we're doing this, uh, short intro about yourself and your favorite color as well, Ben. Sure. Um, well, hi, I, I'm Andy, uh, CEO and co-founder of Control Plane. Uh, I'm basically, I suppose these days, uh, cloud native security engineer, but I've done lots of development and operations and I like databases, all, all sorts of, all sorts of things. Um, my favorite color, it's probably, I mean, it's probably got to be oh, the red. Oh, super bad. It's like, okay, I don't, yeah. I don't know if you have to do that, but yeah. sure. <laughs> she just realized Lewis, Andy, and me, all of us are wearing some kind of hot jumper and so is Duffy. So clearly we have our favorite colors there. Like she's got the blue <laughs> and someone said, just called out that you have a Hulk mode going on over there with dripping a uh, jersey <laughs> off. But now welcome, man. Well, well, welcome. Uh, good to have you here. How'd you get involved with cloud native secu uh, security? That's a good question. Um, broadly, uh, I, I was lucky to be in a team of um, like one of the best teams I've ever worked in, just uh, delivering delivering what was basically like an ETL and uh, machine learning system back in like 2014. And Docker turned up, and it just uh, it was obviously the the next thing to do, the, the next computing revelation revolution. And because there were a lot of bodges and hacks in order to get stuff working around the early versions, especially looking at some of the security challenges that were inherent in the thing. Um, it just became uh, an interesting journey to uh, to embark upon. And that was seven years ago. Wow, you look so young, man, for seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. But I welcome, though. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you are uh, with us for the past seven years. <laughs> Uh, we've got one more person joining us, uh, so just gonna wait for the individual to come in. Hey, hey, James, welcome, man. Welcome, welcome to the show. Hey, hey. good evening. Thank you very much, or good afternoon, as I guess it is your time. Yeah, where, where was are you based, Charlotte James? Like, what's your time zone now? Uh, I'm also UK, so it is. Oh, so we have. Oh, 
oh, we have three British folks over here going to just like, go into a tea party now suddenly. <laughs> yeah, rocking the uh, late night party. Uh, fair enough. No, I'm, I'm, well, I'm from Australia, so I guess I can definitely join the tea party there for sure. So uh, don't mind me with that. Uh, so James, the way we're doing is a bit of a in, short intro about yourself, favorite color, and yeah, uh, how you got involved with the community? Sure. Um, so I am a security engineer at Control Plane, um, and as part of my job, I um, sort of contribute to CTF and community events like these, um, but also sort of breaking and fixing uh, security issues with clients um, and advising really on um, ways they could improve. Um, I guess, how do I get involved with the community um, or, or with Cloud Native? So that would be um, at, at a previous role, um, working as a consultant. So I had a lot of exposure to um, different clients and uh, technologies that they, that they worked with and um, just slowly as, um, companies became more and more uh, or adopted more and more cloud technologies. Um, we sort of had to cater to the, the security needs there. And um, that, that's where I was. In, yeah, in, terms, of favorite, in terms of favorite color, uh, arguably not a color, but I think I'm going to go with black. Oh, nice. <laughs> great <job. laughs> funny how many people actually have black here in this uh, group as well it's not even funny so clearly someone someone somewhere loves black quite a bit as well so uh you, you definitely now in the majority there as well my friend but uh, i think that's all our guests so far so looking forward to kind of talking about the catch the flag and how we kind of find other people solve challenges maybe help them find some hints hopefully and get to get to next step uh what's the next step uh, magno i'm over to you man sure Thank you, Ashish. Think that was a great introduction. Yeah, uh, I think I'll start with one question here, and and uh, for for anyone, feel free to to pick it up. But may, maybe uh, before we go into the CTF challenge, like, what do you think are the most common mistakes organizations are making when deploying their cloud native technologies and services, like? If there was one kind of advice or one kind of recommendation from any of you, what would you suggest there? Um, any volunteers? I would say, you know, like it becomes, it frequently comes to like insecure defaults and things like that. Um, yeah. It also, and, and, and I think that kicks off like an important point about like, you know, just even beginning to understand like threat modeling in general. Like if you're going to deploy applications that are going to be in any way exposed to the outside world, figuring out because hopefully you're the one that developed that application or at least evaluated that application for its purpose, you know, figuring figuring out like uh, a reasonable security model around that and like, you know, what and, and how you will uh, how you will respond to that, like how you're going to configure that thing in a more secure way than than the uh, two minute tutorial on, you know, wherever you found <laughs> wherever you found it is probably a thing I wish I saw more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I agree. I think um, you know things out of the box aren't uh, exactly how you want them to be in production. You know, is it a great idea to put thirty seven apps on a Kubernetes cluster with no network network segregation? Did you know that you could actually do network segregation on Kubernetes? You know, and a lot of these concepts are the same things. Like these are the same concepts as they were twenty years ago. But you know, kind of. I think people make this mistake of like, oh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. That's like old time problems. The new time problems are like something different, but it's like the same problems. I think the bigger curse is I don't have to worry about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's so a certainly future the problem. That's all right, right? No problem. I was, I was also going to uh, probably quote Nikki what you said earlier. We're reaching out to people in the community as well because it's a great Slack community for Cloud Native as well. If you, if when in doubt, just reach out to people. Yeah, one thing I was going to add on the previous question, and just to kind of echo what uh, you know, Duffy and Nikki are saying, is certainly Kubernetes. The power of it is all the you know the declarative configuration, all of the details that it allows you to configure. But knowing what to what to configure can seem dauntingly complex, right? So. Just starting with, um, you know, kind of learning the configurations uh, and there's great references out there, but it takes some time to 
understand how to configure things like a pod security context, what all of those settings mean, and you know, just following best practices there. For sure, yeah, I agree. Like, uh, it's it, it's a, a steep learning curve until you have. It's like okay, it's maybe it would be uh, kind of easy to deploy a cluster, but then to secure it and and have it properly protected with uh, all the kinds of security tools that you have available, then then it's it's a next step, right? So, yeah. yeah. Andy, um, Louis, yep. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll jump in for a moment and then I'll. Um, just from my perspective, though, is, and that's a, that's for me the beauty of cloud native is everybody's different, and so everybody's got different ways of learning. Everyone's coming with different experiences, whether it's been twenty years in the industry or you're brand new to this. Like within our company, we've got people with masters and their doctors, and we've got people who left school with nothing because they hacked the network and then they broke out. It's, I think, it's more about what you need to do for yourself as well. It's a case of you can just look. You've got to figure out what it is for you. Like for me, when I started, I was trying to go for all these like dazzling bits but for me it was about the fundamentals and when i understood the fundamentals rather than having all these abstractions i could understand what those abstractions were doing and to me that's the most powerful thing that i've ever done within kubernetes is fully understand the core components so start on just understand linux and there's always like another thing i can read about or go deeper into and that's the beauty of this and if your glass is half empty then it's sometimes you know what you don't know but then being half full, it's like you've got an opportunity to, to learn something new. And for me, that's that's the best bit about what I do for a living. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I, I think to your point also, uh, one of the other big ones that I see companies make in general, regardless of whether they're deploying cloud native or deploying software or doing any of that stuff, is that a, a lot of cultures lack a learning culture, right? Like, and that I think is a big one. Like if, if you can, if, if you come at pretty much anything as a company and you have a learning culture, like it, it's actually rewarded to explore and experiment and iterate and, 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 you know, be open with that stuff, then you're going to be in a such, so much a better place out of the box, you know what I mean? Like, or out of the gate, you'd be a better place. Hmm. I, I definitely agree on that last point. I think with, with cloud native, you're, you're forced to, Ha you, you're almost forced to have that lear learning culture because of the pace of development of especially um, projects like Kubernetes and many other in this in the space that they move forward at, at such a pace if, if you don't if you don't have that that learning you're, you're left behind essentially awesome oh, so, so great insight there as well but I was gonna slightly twist this a bit more I was gonna ask um, one about for people who may be coming in for the first time may, may have kind of found out about all of us uh, just now here, this thing called KubeCon. So for people who are coming from that perspective, uh, I guess, what resources do you recommend for them to start learning about Kubernetes security? Because clearly sounds like we all agree that defaults are probably not the best, but is there a resource that we would normally point them to for saying, hey, this is where you should go or, or reach out to any of the folks over here, but just this is where you should go. Where, where would you send people? Whoever, I I just go like round the clock. <laughs> Take the pick. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be super tempting to say, you know, do a CTF because that's what we're here to do. <laughs> like, but I mean, in in reality, that is a great way to get started. I mean, you're going to meet people. You're going to like explore problems that you know that 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 make you think about way, things in different ways. Um, another one is that you know events like the Cloud Native Security Day is another good one. You know, like getting in here and like actually uh understanding what's happening in the space understanding you know how how people what what solutions are out there to solve security problems for kubernetes and why those problems require those solutions you know what i mean like and like really like taking it apart and and uh, i will say it's a very big complex uh ecosystem it's a lot to learn and there's a lot to do and i will also say that i think it's important that you figure out whatever approach works for you to approach it. Like it could be that you're like, you know what, I'm going to study admission controllers for a month and I'm only going to look at that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to look at pod security context for a month and really like get to know that study the API, understand what's in there. You know I mean? Like, like just take it by chapters. You don't, nobody expects, nobody expects everyone to know everything, you know? But... That was a great answer, Duffy. Anyone else wants to add on to it? I mean, I guess in true hacker form, experimenting, right? Spinning up your own clusters, deploying things, 
figuring out how to put it on the internet, how these load balancers work, how the whole network, you know, is structured inside Kubernetes. I mean, just sort of that normal hackery kind of thing. And there's there's even cheap ways. Like I experimented with KOps, which is like a cheap way to run Kubernetes clusters. Because if you spin up like an EKS or GKS, you can get a pretty serious bill if you forget about that. For like, I mean, not serious, but enough, right? So with KOps, you could actually just run them on EC2s or just regular compute nodes that aren't special. And you can kind of keep that really trim. And you can just play around. And I think that's a really great way to try to learn the security model. I think by pretending to be a developer and then pretending to be a security person, kind of where those things overlap is, is generally good security. Oh, that's a great answer. Just realized someone on the comment section said basically pen test their own infrastructure application. That's one way to learn. Just pen test and find out, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a, sh it's a ship <laughs> container. Oh, it's a bot. Oh, right. OK, so that, oh, fair enough. I that's got true. it. That's for the kind project, which is even cheaper because it runs through Kubernetes and Docker containers. Yeah, that is cheaper. Kind, kind, of, kind is a really good one yeah. because, like, to your point, like it's just perfect for like setting up, and it's also very extensible. You can configure clusters to be insecure. In fact, there are whole projects around that. And you can also attempt to, uh, you know, make a Kubernetes cluster very secure and, and see how that's going to work out for you, and like try your different security models and stuff. I, I agree with the hacker thing, though. That's the way. Huh? Yeah, people always talk about like, you know, Kubernetes, you know, container breakouts as like a big deal, right? So you can figure out how to get that to work if you build out your own clusters. Like, what would it take to break out of this container? And so I don't know. So that's a great hammering, question because I think that someone hammering on that point. No, I, I think it's a good one because I think uh, that's, that's what, what's the, unless you can break yourself and some break, talking about breaking ourselves, someone just basically said breaking production forces you to learn. So <laughs> that definitely would make you a lot. Uh, yeah. So I, I guess there are questions coming in for folks over here as well. So feel free to drop them in as well, and we'll try and answer them. But I, I love the idea. Any, anyone else wants to contribute in terms of, I know Magno yeah. has his own uh, GitHub repository, which we have posted as a link over there as well. So awesome resource. I think uh, um, Cloud Security Podcast ran a whole month of Kubernetes security where Magno was there as a guest as well. But um, there seems like a lot of resources, but it, so it doesn't feel like, um, as if you go reach out to the community, it sounds like there's plenty of uh, good information out there for you to learn the right way. Otherwise, uh, without breaking production, try and hack your own uh, Kubernetes cluster. That's the that's the uh, that's the summary of it. Yeah, so, there's also some pretty good tools out there. Like you know, there's a site uh, which lists a bunch of pods with you know insecure and bad configurations. I think it it's called like bad pods. Um, you know, so you can see what types of exploits can be um, can be performed on those. There's another uh, you know, Kubernetes simulator which kind of shows um, different other thing misconfigurations that can be done. There's also, if you're looking for a very, like, I, I guess, a high-level resource to get started with, there's a good um, paper from Tag Security on Cloud Native Security, uh, which gives a great overview of the different topics. Awesome. Uh, actually, that reminds me. Uh, another cloud native member, Madhu, has like a thing called Cube Goat that's for right, Kubernetes yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's another one. I think like, there's so much resources in the community. It's just worthwhile just uh, looking around. And oh, there you go. There's a security white paper as well. You can just, you can just keep going about this. But uh, so many resources that you can reach out to and at least find out about this. I think the yeah. Cube Goat is a different resource. I'll, I'll update the resource in a second. <laughs> I'd probably just add to that as well, just with a CTF that we've uh, set up for today. Um, the basis of this is like, how do you start with trying to figure out how do you build a cluster that's misconfigured? How do you how do you start this? And this year is based on movies. And so instead of trying to find that creativity from looking within Kubernetes, you look for something else. So whether that be movies, music, or something. Um, so. And that allows you to then think about your infrastructure a little bit differently, then you make it a little bit more creative and fun. Because I don't know if you all remember LAN parties and such, but that's effectively what we're doing with CTFs. We're trying to bring people together. We're just in that room. And part of it is to learn on that challenge, yes, but part of it is to connect with other people, ask someone for help as well, all these things. And I think that's that point as well. Even if you don't capture a flag, you're getting through so many things that you haven't done before. And these are brand new, and you might not even know what you're doing, essentially. But in two weeks' time, go back, try it again, and then all of a sudden, You've upskilled, and before you know it, then just you're just getting so much better at what you do. I was gonna say, Louis, what land party are you talking about? I was born on the internet, man. Like I don't, I don't, <laughs> I know I look that old, but 
I don't know what LAN parties are. I just always been on the internet playing online games. So. This is the beauty of uh, being virtual. Is is the amount of filters I've got on my face right now. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. You can't tell like the amount of pain I've been through. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with Luis there. Like with the CTS, I even started in InfoSec. I come as a developer background there and, and was because of CTS where I started hacking web applications and everything. And also with the Kubernetes one, there was a workshop that they did on, I think it was KubeCon North America 2019, which is the securekubernetes.com website that really helped me a lot on, on okay, understanding the basics and, and, and some of the attacks there and, and how, to, how to protect your cluster. So yeah, I think that's that's a great segue into the CTF challenge. And I think we can, uh, if everyone agrees, we can move on to try to solve uh, one of the challenges live. No pressure. No pressure, yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> OK, so the. Uh, Generous and benevolent Taskmaster Overlord has allocated me a cluster and on the screen and get involved. Um, it would also be remiss of me not to mention um, there is uh, there's a book coming out on O'Reilly called Hacking Kubernetes that the, uh, the, the great folks at Control Plane contributed a huge amount to. Um, and uh, Amazon tells me, because I've pre-ordered my own book, uh, that should be out at the end of the month, potentially. Looking forward to it. Yes, with a lot of trepidation, so am I. <laughs> okay, how does that look? Whenever you're writing a book, I wonder how, how that errata section is already looking. You know, like it's, it's one of those things like you can't, <laughs> you're going to miss stuff. It's always that. Yeah, exactly. Someone told me the other day, um, uh, James Strong and, and someone else of um, is it Valerie? I, I can't remember offhand. Um, published the book and, and people just came back to them straight away with uh, with typos, so I've been frantically um, <laughs> doing doing the final scans in the last couple of days. Yeah, that was Valerie was and James, cool. and they they just dropped the um, Kubernetes networking. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so got a trust bundle. In we go. All right, so what I've done here is I've just uh, taken the, the trust bundle that the taskmaster gave to me. That just gave me some configuration, an SSH key, and uh, in we go. So I'm now into a pod in a cluster, and uh, the goal of the scenario is to pivot out of the initial foothold, ultimately find the flag, and... Uh, Yes, that the, there may be orthogonal references to the prestige. I I will be your hands if uh, people would like to suggest. LS. Could you <laughs> could you increase the font size a little bit more, Andy, as well? Just yeah. a slight. That's it. Thank you, mate. They'd bring my specs start with. Uh... Yeah. Can we also Sorry. do PS. PS minus EF. Oh. Okay, Temp. find find proc or find slash proc. Oh. Can you can you check the environment variables? Okay. So it looks like proc numerically goes up to about 14. So there's a, there are probably a number of processes running in this container. Um, I might be tempted to grep for the command line, uh, the command line uh, file from each of the proc with a number. Sorry, Andy, just to say the bottom line as well is taken with your name. Um, so either if you could just Ooh. change your name by depot so you can make it a little bit smaller <laughs> or the, either way, but that's better. Thank you. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So someone's also referenced using kubectl um, within the chat as well. So, well, depending on how you get with this now. Did we check DF to see if there's a secret in here? 
Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll get this uh, visible. What is the name of the movie that this challenge is based again? This is based on a movie called The Prestige, which is a movie by Christopher Nolan. What? Great, great, great movie, great movie. And there is not a prompt in sight in that movie. But in that movie, if you have seen it, it's more about the ending, which I cannot, I, I can't come on Twitch and ruin the movie. But um, if you think about the twist at the end, then that's something that we're trying to align to do with our cluster today. Did we, did we test whether we can actually run QCuddle? Yeah, Jim Jim mentioned the secrets there. Maybe are we able to get the token? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? We can kind of cut to the chase on that one pretty quick. Cube kettle off can off can dash i dash dash list. One of my favorite commands in the world. Yeah. It's your middle name, isn't it, Duffy? <laughs> Whenever we receive your streams, that's that's what you say. Uh, one of my favorite. So that's actually pretty cut down. Like, it's like it looks like a default. Um, it looks like a default uh, service service account. Although you can delete namespaces, that's kind of surprising. And you can delete deployments, and you can get deployments and pods. So there's, yeah. I guess it's not quite the default. There's a little bit more to it, but it's not a wild card. Well, you can you create can see... deployments and pods, right? Or yeah. is that not lining up right? I don't know. Yep. There's like some spillover. Yeah. Yeah. Full so maybe maybe we write some YAML and try to mount the host file system. Let's see what's already there. Though. Like, let's do kubectl oh, okay. get deployment. Kubectl get pod. Looks like there's some uh, might be an interesting CRD there as well. Yeah, the open ID ones. Um, oh, get, with... get all namespaces. Can we see them all yet? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Can we do kubectl get pod dash a or dash kettle a? Kyverno. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna Google Kyverno. I don't know what that is. So that's the policy engine. Oh, it's a engine policy engine. From, yeah. All right. But that's okay because we have a ringer room. You know, when it comes to Kyverno. <laughs> I've never used Kyverno. This is why we lined up a CTF because we had a problem. So we're just trying to figure out. So we got Jim here to help us out now. So got it. together in the end. So can we look in the Caverno namespace and see, or we can even do um, try to get all the namespace as well. What was that command? Sorry. So there is a um, the prestige namespace. That's what there. Yeah. yeah well, is there anything running in there? Deployments in prestige? Oh no, none. What about pods or anything running in anything in there? Start. So should we go into that? Let's, let's check his logs and tell us to see if he wants it to tell us the story first, and then we'll log back in. All right. All right. That was the log output. <laughs> We're not that me. Okay. <laughs> so, so did we have is... access to get the cluster policies or any of the configured policies? 
How does Caverna work? Is it like OPA? There's like CRDs and stuff? There are CRDs. It's, um, yeah, there's one called policy and there's a cluster wide called cluster policy. You can do kubectl API resources and see all of the CRDs that are defined. Uh, although it might not work because I'm not sure we have a credential for it, but. Yeah, if we, um, if you, just, if you were to look in the, um, auth can I response earlier, there was a bit of a hint as to what we can get with regards right. to Kiverno. So one interesting output in the early, in the previous output, when it said that service account wasn't allowed to do logs, what that also says is that we're in the prestige namespace. The pod we're in is in the prestige namespace. Yeah. Okay. It's a funny What about, is there, to, to be are there any net, sorry, sorry, go. Any network, uh, anything in this namespace? Services or sorry, SVC. I think we're in there. I don't know if we have to write it every time, but yeah, right, you are. Oh, well, we can't list that. Got it. All right. But we do have like what 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 access do we have to that CRD? We can do a get and a list of the CRD. Yeah, it looked like we could do for cluster policies. So you could just do get CPOL. Okay. Can we just do minus OYAML on those or All right. What's the message in between? Something about production node I was having some yeah. trouble when I was touching this. Is that the only one installed, or is there more? Oh, yeah. No, that, that, there's a few. I'll do them in, individually. Is there a disallow host file system one? Can you um can you try to type S in a center just randomly for me to see if the command is in the bottom of the box? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, so what was that little hint we just saw? I think we have to Anywhere else to deploy an image? Um, hmm. Yeah, we like cron jobs or some other. I think we have create privileges, and maybe we should pull what we can do again because I think we could just maybe write a YAML file to. So what is what is this policy restricting? Is it just cron? I was trying to. Read that but my screen is being weird and so i see like what the what the result is so we, what is it i think it's container or origin yeah maybe we just need a it is kind of small i'm like you're gonna see my like eyeball in a second on the camera <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the same there are two policies one restricts where you can de or with the name of the image you can deploy and the other one okay. restricts the privileges that you can use when you run it the okay. name or this the name or the location of the image container the, image must match the image reference sorry yeah. okay i see 
and, and it's only and in certain namespaces. So I have two questions. My first question is, of the pods that are running in the cluster right now, including the one that we are in, can we see what the image name of that is? And is it part of the batch? Um, so it'd be like dash OYAML or dash A, dash OYAML, and then grep for um, image. Yeah. So we can't create new pods on that namespace, right? Because of the policies. Uh, someone mentioned that on the Twitch chat create a new pod that's privileged, that's not going to work, right? Um, what about the developer namespace? There was a developer namespace uh, as well. Uh, Development. Can we do uh, the same auth can I list, but inside of that namespace? So we should be able to deploy over there. So the policy seemed to be restricting in three namespaces, but we could try and create a pod in a privileged pod in maybe Kube system or one of the other namespaces, which it's not blocking. Yeah, let's, yeah, we could, I mean, we could iterate through the other namespaces and see if we have any permissions in any of them, that's true. That's your name, you wild man. Uh, yeah, before I, <laughs> I going to say before I do this, I've actually got all the things installed. Yeah. Uh, that's not the right way. Hmm. On the fly, let's see if yeah, that's working. Because of the way the name actually puts the namespace in, that's going to give you a hard time. You can't really. But at least you can like split on the. You could split on the slash. Do it probably that way. More than one go. There we go. But we can't see which namespace we're in. Sorry, that's not the clearest output. Let's just uh, let's just grab for sake of pod. let's grab for pods um, and and deployments or something like. I was going to say, for, for sake of time, we'll assume that you could. You, you could work this out eventually. Um, we will. We know that we can deploy, or all of the things that we could do in the prestige namespace, we can also do in the development namespace. Is there anything running in the development namespace now? I think there's a point raised earlier on in this uh, in this panel, though, about like different things about what we can do in namespaces and so forth. So some policies and such to prevent things from talking. I should probably prevent myself from. <laughs> we have 15 minutes. What does the other, what does the other terminal get to us? Does the other terminal have like another cube kettle or is it the same? Like what's happening with that other terminal? Do you mean this one here? Yeah, that one then. What is that? I just that... popped that so that I could space out the uh, the top terminal because of my name blocking it. Oh, okay. So it's it's not. We're, we're all all we're doing is inside the container. Okay, got it. Okay, so looking at the union of the permissions that we have <laughs> and the namespaces that we have, we need to figure out effectively like what we can deploy where that that gives us more permission. So based on those policy rules, like I think we saw one that was like more permissive of of uh, privileged containers, and that was the development namespace. Is that right? 
Yes. Yep. So we could do something sneaky like run and then give it the image and possibly, uh, um, I guess we'd have to figure out like maybe one of the image names that is already in the allow list for namespace and then see if we could get something happen in there. Then the question is, like, how would we access that other container? We'd have to probably go over the network or something. Can you pull the res restrict images policy? Could you just put it back up on the screen? Super secure org. What's right. in there? Did we look in there? Oh. That is a public repo. Let's go look. I got an oops. So it's probably private. But let's look. Oh, wait a minute. Look at the match. Wait, hold on. What was that? The pattern is two greater than. It's any word, any word, tab, colon, production. Wait, guy, it right. says there's like a good hint there. I was having trouble when I was testing this up with my personal typo Docker Hub account, but it works now. Uh, so somebody oh, removed no. Docker IO super secure org, it seems like? Yeah, or? exactly. So, so now we just need a container that has the production tag. We can retag any container, right? Well, wait, hold up. If Docker Hub was 404ing, is that... Like GitHub will 404 if you don't have the permissions. Is that true about Docker Hub or it just means it doesn't exist? I think you will get a, I think you'll get a, um, does not exist if the, if the repo doesn't matter. But in, in, in this case, it matter at all because the way the match works, the match could be any Docker Hub repo, right? It just right, has, right, it's right. the important part is that the tag is production. So if we have something right. with the production tag, and it could be, I mean, it could be Alpine. It could be like, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yep. Forget yes, my it's... super secure org. Yeah, yeah. So it seems right, like so somebody let's... edited this policy and made it work for them uh, by just wildcarding. So let's find like a shady Docker image or. <laughs> I, yes. I, I'm, I'm tempted here to ask our, uh, ask our wonderful hosts if they have already created one, if one <laughs> available, like an Alpine, Alpine tag production, because I. I can make one. Yeah, we said we don't use... Oh, that's handy. We could pull down Rolling Cali. I had totally forgot about the next screen. I've been trying to remember the name of that thing forever. And this is the cool, cool project because it takes like the, the Nick stuff and you can basically give it like with slashes the packages that you want to have installed and it will just like deploy that. I love that. So freaking cool. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so here is one we created on the fly earlier. So let's do kubectl run dash dash n or dash n uh, development dash dash or give it a name like knock knock or something. You know. Oh, you don't need the you don't need the dash dash name part. All right, get rid of the dash. dash oh yeah, name right. Part. Yeah, yeah. And then dash dash image equals. And then let's try dash dash privilege because that's how we roll around here. Oh. <laughs> so if it were me, what I would do is I'd grab I'd grab this template spec, um, maybe like try, dump a dry dry run and back kick it to YAML. And then I would add host pid access to the um, to the YAML, and then at that point we should be able, like, if we're able to deploy this, and we should be able to get all the way into the host file system. You might want to check that that's deployed properly. It hurts us, you know. Dang it. Can we see can we see the events? Okay, can someone explain for the audience what's going on right now? Like I know that we're trying to deploy a container. Oh. Yep. Yes. 
So we had figured out that through a union of permissions that, that we see, because of the way that image matching is working, it's going to allow us to deploy any old image into the development namespace, which is great for us. Um, and then we had an image that was provided that gives us the ability to define like what we want to have kind of pre-installed in that image. We tried to deploy that into the development namespace. And I was using a dash dash privilege flag, which is a new flag in, uh, I think, 120 or something like that where you can basically make that container a privilege container, which is a kind of a pretty good asset test to see like how, how, how much privilege can I give that container so that I can do things like exploit things and, and other fun stuff. Um, that didn't work though. What ended up happening was that we were, when we made, tried to make the deployment, it says create container error. And that create container error could be pretty much anything. So, oh wait. Yeah, it could be pretty much anything. And I was trying to see the events then to see if maybe it would tell us like, you know, no such image at that address or, you know, it's Friday and I, in Kubernetes this hates me or, you know, whatever it is, right? Like, but. <laughs> awesome. So what's next? Any other options? We, so we I, what, what, should we try to mount the host file system in the image, in our YAML? Is that like what? Aren't we trying to yeah, break I out of this? If, yeah, exactly. I can't remember if that was like our original target was to get into the actual um, host file system or not. Like, can you remind me of that? Yeah. What, what What's our objective? It should be related to the movie, but I know that movie came out in two thousand six. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay, so we're on the right uh, track. Hint, we, we probably don't need host file system. We probably just need you to deploy something in that other namespace and then pivot to it. So based on the URL of the image that we have, shell, bash, concat, nutar, dig, gzip, and curl, which is weirdly missing things like netcat, although that might already be in there. What if we try to ditch the dash dash privilege? And you, it's going to complain at you because you've already defined it, I suppose. So you're going to have to do like knock knock Neo 2 or something or delete it. Uh oh. Yeah, without it, the error message. This is a tough one. Can you describe it's a the, helpful error. Try going the other way to get it. Uh, can you describe the pod? And then down at the bottom. Uh, there was a helpful error message on screen a moment ago. Oh, sorry. Someone is mentioning uh, try try adding a command to the deployment. I'm not sure from the chat there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like sleep or something. Dash dash command. Get long. <laughs> Infinity. Um, mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. Can we try the privileged again? Or that was the Coop Cuddle version. Nice. Right. It worked. <clears throat> so we so we are kind of in an interesting place where we could go after the host file system. I guess what I'm trying to understand is whether the foothold is in the root. Like, do we need to take over a node, or do we just need to set, have access to another container? So like, if we were going to go into another container, what we might do is like set up a net server or something on in the one that we've just spun up somehow. Well, probably that would be our command, right? Like, n n c minus l some port, and then try to get there from the one we're in and then see what we can do to like then further dig around. That sounds incredibly sensible. Um, uh, here's one I created earlier. 
Let's try and shave a minute or two off. Oh, that's taking more time to load, excuse me. There we go. Oh, Ingrock. Okay. So do we make it into the next container? I can't really tell what's happening in the screen right now. Uh, so, so I have just spun up an Engrock tunnel here. Uh, and then here. Uh, here, I'm going to create, I'm going to do this as a deployment because um, I have set it up uh, and testing. In the development namespace, I mean, it's, it's exactly what Duffy just suggested. Um, set up a reverse shell using that cunning Nixery uh, sort of dynamically created image. It's obviously cached now, we've used it a few times. Uh, spin up Honecat, which fires. Connect which out. Back, mm, yeah, which, which binds back to this shell, which is not yet connected to anything, but it's set up through this tunnel here. Uh, fingers crossed. There we go. So now this shell is connected to this deployment that we've just created here. Um, notably, I didn't create that as privileged. Nice. Okay, so let me just reverse out and do that again. If we're going to go down that path, and hold on a second, because what we should do is also throw in the host pid to see if we can get away with that. Because um, if we can get away with that, then we basically just NS enter into the root file system and away we go. Loves an NS enter. Um, I wonder if somebody I... in the chat is is saying, shouldn't we just exec into it? That's a good point. Exec isn't one of our commands, unfortunately. Oh, all right, all right. Got it. So I wonder if we can create privileged deployments. Does it work that way as well, or is that specifically on the pod? Uh, I think it's I think it's a run command. It's kubectl get run or kubectl create or kubectl run, and then you get um, privilege in there. Otherwise, what you could do is just kubectl create the deployment dash yaml dash dash try run, and then we can throw stuff in there, right? Like add the privilege, add the host bit. Sorry. Hmm. Typo purgatory, create deployment. Okay. So at this point, what we're trying to do <laughs> is we're trying to figure out how to get into the um, try. So we, our, our goal is to get another foothold into the cluster. And so what we've got so far is we've determined that we can deploy a container or a pod or a deployment, what have you, in another in another namespace and give it privilege and give it like, um, you know, a bit more privilege than it should have. And then if we can get to that, and by some means, then we would then also be able to kind of use that as a jumping point to get to maybe another jumping point, which might be the underlying nodes file system where we can put things like our SSH keys or another ngrok server or all kinds of other fun stuff. So at the moment, that's kind of what we're we're tackling. And, at, um, and what we've got so far is that Andy was helpful in speeding us up by basically setting up an ngrok endpoint on the outside world and then using our deployment into the development namespace to connect to it. And so in this screen, we can actually interact with, it's as though we had kubectl exec into the container, although the echo is a little weird, but like we could still interact with that container now. So the question then is like, what can we do from in there? Like we can, we can see like, um, Maybe we can see if we can uh, get to the root, uh, to the underlying nodes file system, or get, you know, ex ex escape to the node with sufficient privileges, and let's see what we can sh shake out from there. Yeah, so we're in this position where we need to insert a security context into this deployment file, and rather than trying to do it on the node, which I was just about to set myself up for a world of pain, um, I'm just going to take it off and, and do it. Uh, it locally.
Um, and what do you want to do? Um, does that look right? I guess we nope. Host bits in the spec. Yes. Excellent catch. It's uh, my favorite press right. method as well. So. Host bit is all by itself in the spec. It's like up there with DNS. Oh, yeah, right, you stuff. Are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just plant side validation. I can't think how I'm doing that. There's a yeah, question in the chat about whether we're allowed to edit, and the answer I think is yes, we could edit. Oh, yeah. No, the policies, we could have just deleted them. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how sh <laughs> how should we proceed? Shall I try and deploy what we've just done, or do you want to take a different route? I I think we need to wrap up. Um, we're up pretty much out of time. Um, do you have any any kind of anyone has any recommendations there? I can tell you where I was thinking about next. So my next trick was going to be to like once we actually get into the container, I was going to do NS enter minus a my, uh, minus T for target and NS enter minus a for all namespaces minus T for target and then PID one and then bash. And what that does is it's an NS enter command that basically opens up a new bash shell in the in in the um, in the same namespace context that PID one resides. So if you were to like SSH into the node using normal SSH methods, you would also be kind of in that same context, right? You'd be able to see all the network interfaces. PS minus CF would be full of processes. You'd effectively be um, in that space. And since this is a privilege container, you'd be operating as root. So when you make the transition, you're as root on the underlying file system of the node. That was my goal. That was my next goal. And if we could accomplish that, then that node belongs to us. And we could do all kinds of other fun stuff. Like we could see if there are other credentials just laying around on the node that are going to make themselves friendly. Um, we could throw another server on there, like another ngrok, and give us remote access to the node that is now something that we have access to. We can do all kinds of fun stuff with the container runtime, all of those things. So that policy which blocked the privileges, though, wasn't that also namespace? That I think it had like a filter with two or three namespaces, right? So we could, you know, if we run this privilege pod maybe in one of the other namespaces, that will get us through. Yeah, I think we I think we figured out that the privilege was just was we we could do we could get away with a lot more inside the development namespace, which is pretty common, um, and that we were deployed inside the prestige namespace. What I'm curious about is like what the twist would have been. I don't know that one. So I think I think you would find that the privilege container would have been blocked. But you're certainly right in saying but the that privilege there container were... started. We have two privilege containers currently running inside of the development namespace. Interesting. To be explored then. Maybe we then found a, a non conventional way to solve this. Did someone say default misconfiguration? <laughs> <laughs> there is at least one other advantage of being in the development namespace, which we uh, perhaps can leave for people to find. Yeah, I think I think this is great. We we had a, a great 
walkthrough of that challenge and without giving too much away, people still have gonna have a, a hard time to solve it. So yeah, uh, before I think before we move on and, and I'm sure there will be some uh, probably some walkthroughs and some uh, uh, guidance for solving the, the challenges after the CTF is done. But any any kind of last words there any any um last recommendations for our, our audience here have fun break stuff yeah. Try harder. The planet. <laughs> I, I think it highlights one of the um one of the things about um ids and policy configuration we've got access to so much declarative policy now which is amazing but as soon as you introduce regexes there is potentially a rod for one's own back. There's there's no other way to really do this. You have to have, I mean, you don't just want a simple wildcard. Regex make a lot of sense. I, I know that was wildcard in that case as well. Um, but yeah, it, it really, reuse open source policy is, uh, is, is my short learning from that one. Awesome. Nice. Uh, anyone else? Jim, Lewis? I think just one one tip for the remainder of it is um, just just enumerate enumerate enumerate. There is there are still things to find. So uh, yeah, keep exactly. Keep digging. <laughs> and awesome. if all else fails, go and make a cup of tea, have a biscuit, and it's not the end of the world. Oh. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are new to that yeah, well, it's, it's tech. Well, actually, you're ahead of us, aren't you? So it's now tomorrow today for us in the UK. It's just gone midnight. Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, I'm, I'm having coffee over you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, enough okay. cannot be said about just get up and walk around. You know, like talk about your problem out loud and like right. and, you know, like get your brain working in a way that it's not currently. You know, you know, like exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining. I think this was great. Our second session for today and, and it was great to have everyone here and yeah, hope to see you soon. Thanks everyone. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.